So these supermassive black holes were formed somewhere early on in the universe. I mean, that's a feature, not a bug, right? That we don't have too many of them. Otherwise we wouldn't have uh, uh, the time or the space to form the, the little pockets of complexity that we call humans. I think that's fair, yeah. It's always interesting when something is difficult but happens anyway, right? I mean, the probability of making a black hole could have been zero. It could have been one, but it's this interesting number in between, which is kind of fun. Are there more intelligent alien civilization than there are supermassive black holes? Yeah, I have no idea, but I think would. your intuition is right that it would have been easy for there to be lots of civilizations and then we would have noticed them already. And we haven't. So absolutely the simplest explanation for why we haven't is that they're not there. Yeah, I just think it's so easy to make them though. So there must be, I understand that's the simplest explanation, <laughs> but also- How easy is it to make life? Or eukaryotic just, life or multicellular life? It seems like life finds a way. Intelligent alien civilizations, sure. Maybe there is somewhere along that chain a really, really hard leap. But once you start life, once you get the origin of life, it seems like life just finds a way everywhere in every condition. It just figures it out. I mean, I get it. I get exactly what you're thinking. I think it's a perfectly reasonable attitude to have before you confront the data. I would not have expected Earth to be special in any way. I would have expected there to be plenty of very noticeable extraterrestrial civilizations out there. Um, but even if life finds a way, even if we buy everything you say, how long does it take for life to find a way? What if it typically takes 100 billion years? Then we'd be alone. So it's a time thing. So to you, really, there's most likely there's no alien civilizations out there. I just, I can't see it. I believe there's yeah. a ton of them and there's another explanation why we can't see them. I don't believe that very strongly. Look, I'm not going to uh, place a lot of bets here. I would not... I'm both pretty up in the air about whether or not life itself is all over the place. It's possible we, you know, when we visit other worlds, other solar systems, there's very tiny microscopic life ubiquitous, but none of it has reached some complex form. It's also possible there's just, there isn't any. It's also possible that there are intelligent civilizations that have better things to do than knock on our doors. So I think, you know, we should be very humble about these things we know so little about. And it's also possible there's a great filter where there's something fundamental about uh, once a civilization develops complex enough technology, that technology is more statistically likely to, to destroy everybody versus to continue being creative. That is absolutely possible. I'm actually putting less credence on that one just because you need it to happen every single time right? Mm -hmm. If even one, I mean, this goes back to von Neumann pointing, John von Neumann pointed out that you don't need to send the aliens around the galaxy. You can build self-reproducing probes and send them around the galaxy. And you might think, well, the galaxy is very big. It's really not. It's some tens of thousands of light years across and billions of years old. So you don't need to move at a high fraction of the speed of light to fill the galaxy. So if you were an alien, uh, intelligent alien civilization, the dictator of one, you would just send out a lot of probes, self-replicating probes. hundred percent. And- Just spread out. Yes, and what you should do, this is, so if you want the optimistic spin, here's the optimistic spin. People looking for intelligent life elsewhere often tune in with their radio telescopes, right? At least we did before Arecibo was decommissioned. That's a, not a very promising way to find intelligent life elsewhere, because why in the world would a super intelligent alien civilization waste all of its energy by beaming it in random directions into the sky? For one thing, it just passes you by, right? So if, if we're here on Earth, we've only been listening to radio waves for a hundred or a couple hundred years, okay? So if an intelligent alien civilization exists for a billion years, they have to pinpoint exactly the right time to send us this signal. It is much, much more efficient to send probes and to park, <laughs> to go to the other solar systems, just sit there and wait for an intelligent civilization to arise in that solar system. This is kind of the 2001 monolith mm -hmm. hypothesis, right? I would, I would be less surprised to find a sort of quiescent alien artifact in our solar system than I would to catch 
a radio signal from an intelligent civilization. So you're a sucker for in-person conversations versus remote. I just want to integrate over time. Mm -hmm. uh, a probe can just sit there and wait, whereas a radio wave goes right by you. Mm. How hard is it for an alien civilization, again, you're the dictator of one, to figure out a probe that is most likely to find a common language with whatever it finds. Couldn't that be like the elected leader of elected the alien leader, civilization? Democratic leader, uh, <laughs> elected leader of a democratic alien civilization, yes. <laughs> I think we would figure out that language thing pretty quickly. I mean, maybe not as quickly as we do when different human tribes find each other, because obviously there's a lot of commonalities in humanity, but there is logic and math, and there is the physical world. You can point to a rock and go, rock, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? I don't think it would take that long. Um, I know that Arrival, uh, the movie, uh, based on a Ted Chang story, uh, suggested that the way that aliens communicate is going to be fundamentally different, uh, but also they had recognition and other things I don't believe in. So I think that if we actually find aliens, uh, that will not be our long-term problem. So there's a folks, one, one of the places you're affiliated with is Santa Fe, and they approach the question of complexity in many different ways mm -hmm. and ask the question in many different ways of what is life, think, thinking broadly. So do you would be able to find it? You'll think you show up, a probe shows up to a planet, we'll see a thing and be like, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a living thing. Well, again, if it's intelligent and technologically advanced. The the more short-term question of if we get, you know, some spectroscopic data from an exoplanet, so we know a little bit about what is in its atmosphere, how can we judge whether or not that atmosphere is giving us a signature of life existing? Mm -hmm. That's a very hard question that people are debating about. I mean, one very simple-minded but perhaps um, interesting approach is to say, Small molecules don't tell you anything because even if life could make them, something else could also make them. But long molecules, that's the kind of thing that life would produce. So signs of complexity. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just have this nervous feeling that we won't be able to detect. We'll show up to a planet, have a bunch of liquid on it. We like dip, we take a swim in the liquid and we won't be able to see the intelligence in it. Whether whether that intelligence looks like something like, you know, ants or, mm. we'll see movement perhaps, mm -hmm. strange movement, but we won't be able to um, see the intelligence in it or communicate with it. I guess if we have nearly infinite amount of time to play with different ideas, we might be able to. You know, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of this kind of humility, this intellectual humility that we won't know because we should be, prepared for surprises. But I do always keep coming back to the idea that we all live in the same physical universe. And if, well, let, let's put it this way. The development of our intelligence has certainly been connected to our ability to manipulate the physical world around us. And so I would guess, without 100% credence by any means, but my guess would be that any advanced kind of life would also have that capability. You know, both dolphins and octopuses are potential counterexamples to that. But um, I, I think in the details, there would be enough similarities that we would recognize it.